Hello, a very good afternoon to you today. My name is Sister Timmy Tayo and I'm here to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, I'm sure you'll be asking, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Well, it's because as I prepared to enter into the year 2020, which was last year, the Spirit of God instructed me to begin to share this Open Heavens Daily Devotional on YouTube to be very specific. And I was able to start that assignment in the month of June 2020 by the grace of God. So I shared the devotional in June, in August, in October, in December. And in 2021, I resumed sharing in the month of March. I'm sharing now for me and in the subsequent months by the grace of God, and I thank God for the privilege. Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997 when I was an undergraduate in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa, and that's how I got to, knew, to know about Pastor Adeboye. And his style of teaching, Pastor Adeboye's style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures to read. He'll give you a memory verse, and the combination of those two pieces of scripture helps you to understand the body of the text and what the Spirit of God is communicating to the body of Christ at such a time as this. Amen. Now, today is Sunday, May the 23rd. Today is Sunday, May the 23rd, and many of us are already in church, you know. And if you're not in church physically, uh, you're either watching online. But there is nothing like being on site. Amen. Especially if the lockdown has been lifted. The Bible says, unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be amen we have nothing to fear greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world amen just take the necessary pro, you know precautions and appear before god in zion amen praise god so today is sunday may the 23rd and the title of today's devotional is the fullness of time the fullness of time and our scriptural reading today is taken from the book of acts chapter 2 we're reading from verses 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Amen. I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version, and then I'll explain the four verses. Praise God. So Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Thus goes the reading of God's word. And it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like us as of fire. And it sat upon each one of them. On each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. May God bless the reading of his words. Just a few verses. Um, so I'm just going to explain very quickly. So this is the book of Acts. Actually, when you open your Bible, the New Testament starts from the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, Matthew. But actually, the New Testament or the New Covenant starts after the resurrection and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. So actually, the New Covenant begins with the book of Acts. Amen. That's just, you know, the way it is, the covenant, new covenant started, you know, the church started with the new covenant and, you know, so the new Testament actually started with the book of Acts and the book of Acts was written by, um, Luke, the physician. Okay. And, um, in these four verses, it's talking about how, you know, Jesus Christ said to the disciples, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So he instructed them to wait in Jerusalem. So remember there were now 11 because 11 apostles, because Judas had committed suicide. So, um, and you know, they all waited, they were in the upper room and when the Bible says, when the fullness of time, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, you know, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues when the, the, the day of Pentecost was fully come. Amen. And they began to speak in other tongues. Glory to God. The fullness of time. Now, our memory verse is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament, and it says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. 
and pastor goes the, that goes the reading the pastor says that as jesus promised when the day of pentecost was fully come the holy spirit duly came upon his disciples and pastor says in like manner elizabeth despite delay with bearing the fruit of the womb conceived and gave birth to john the baptist in the fullness of god's time that's in luke chapter 1 verses 11 to 16 and these events confirm that our god is a god of times and seasons as it is written in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. Praise God. So what Pastor is saying here is that there's a, a time, God's timing. Okay? And God's timing is different from man's timing. You can't rush God. So Pastor is saying that, you know, um, the day of Pentecost, Jesus told them that the Holy Ghost was coming. It was going to come on a specific day at the time that God wanted the Holy Ghost to be poured out. So the Bible says that the disciples were of one accord. They were of one spirit and they were of one mind and they were upstairs. So at the time that they were, the, God's time, that's when the Holy Spirit came. And then he also uses Elizabeth as an example. You know, Elizabeth, she and her husband were very, very old. They had been trying for to have children. Now they were very, very old. But, you know, God had said about um, about the child that they were going to have, that he was going to go in the spirit and the power of Elijah. He would go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah, meaning that he was going to be a forerunner of the Messiah. So he couldn't have come three, four, five years later. He had to come at the specific time that God wanted, the fullness of time. So he was a special child. So there was a timing for him to be born. And that time is called the fullness of God's time. Now, the fullness of the fullness of time for that God, you know, God's fullness of time is different from the time of life. So, like when um, Elisha spoke to the Shunammite woman, he said that according to the time of life, she will be a son, and according to the time of life, for a woman to be a child was nine months. But that's different. That's Chronos. Um, the fullness of God's time is called Kairos, okay? So it is God's specific time. It's like the timing when he divided the Red Sea. You know, he's never late. So he's, there's a time called the fullness of God's time. Now, pastor says that the almighty God moves very fast whenever he wants to do something. That it's, if it appears that he's slow in taking any action, you can be sure that it is because the set time has not fully come. God is not a slow worker at all. As we see in Genesis 1, he created the entire universe in just six days. So, the pastor is saying that God is not slow at all. He has his timing. You can't rush God. You know, you can't rush God. He has a specific time that he's going to do what he has decided to do. And he will do whatever he's, he has determined in his heart to be done. Okay? So, the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises like some consider slackness. So, the pastor is saying that God is not slow. Amen. And then pastor says that delay, however, may not always be a good thing. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 51, we see how God helped David to move quickly. Had David delayed in separating the head of Goliath from the body, from his body after stoning him to the ground, things could have ended very differently. 1 Samuel 17 51 says, Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, took his sword, and drew it out of the sheet thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. So as I read this, you know, Pastor is saying here that delay, not every delay is, is from God, you know. And that delay may not always be a good thing. You know, it's true that delay is not denial, but not every delay that is from God. Amen. And Pastor was giving an example of David. So David slung a stone into Goliath's head and Goliath fell down dead, you know. And um, that could have been it. But then the Bible then said that he then ran. He stood on the Philistine, took out the Philistine's sword and cut his neck. Then when the Philistine saw that the champion was dead, they then fled. But they didn't flee when they saw the, when they saw the stone get into his head. That means that the guy wasn't fully dead yet. But when David then went and took the sword and cut the guy's head, that was the final straw. They knew the guy was gone completely. So pastor says that if um, David had delayed, you know, so he could have ended up, the guy could have risen up and then, because David was near him, he could have just grabbed him, you know, but he didn't delay. So pastor saying that is, delay is not always a good thing. And pastor says one characteristic of God's fullness of time is that it's sudden. It's sudden. We see this in the Holy Ghost baptism experience in Acts chapter 2, which we read, verses 1 and 2. Similarly, similarly to God just one day. To kick away famine from Samaria, as we see in 2 Kings 7, verses 1 to 18. 
when God moved, food became surplus in the land where people had started killing their own children. Amen. So the Bible says that God does a quick work in righteousness and cuts it short. When God does suddenly, the Bible says suddenly, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, you know, and they began to speak suddenly. You know, he does a quick walk. He's never late. He's not a late God, you know. So, and that, you know, it, it, um, the story which Pastor was talking about in the Old Testament where there had been famine. It just, within a day, God had turned the farming around and the family was so severe that people were eating their children you know a uh, one man stopped the king and said no king please judge you and help us that you know me and this woman we agreed that uh we'll boil that she'll boil her son on the first day and they will eat it eat her son together and then the next day she the two of them she will boil her son and two of them will eat her son so but after she had boiled her son the woman went and hid her son the next day and that's how severe the famine was that people were eating their children you know so but god then said to the prophet that by this time tomorrow the situation would have changed and he did he did a quick walk in righteousness and cut it short pastor says you must have confidence in god that is able to do whatever you desire let your mind be at rest god has never failed and he's he's always going to come at the right time according to hebrews 10 35 and 36 that is the only way you can receive the promise as you patiently wait for god's timing you will encounter God and receive sudden breakthroughs this season. And pastor says your day of celebration will come fully in the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes, as you know, as I was reading this, I just realized that sometimes, you know, God has a specific time that something is going to happen. But prayer can be used as a as a a um, a way to speed up God's promise because sometimes God can forget forget the promise you have to pray and remind him he forgets yet he doesn't forget okay so the bible says that when the children of israel you know they were supposed to have been in bondage for 400 years and 430 years passed you know so then they began to groan under their pain and they began to cry out to god you know then god remembered his promise to abraham isaac and jacob amen so you can use prayer to fast track your miracle amen and that's um you know and and also the children of israel were supposed to be in captivity for 70 years and suddenly daniel realized that okay 70 years is about to pass or is about to um you know and he began to pray to to speed up to you know remind god of his promises amen so prayer is one way you can jump starts you know and begin to um push god's hand towards your miracle praise god if you understand what i mean god doesn't forget you know but sometimes he wants you to remind him praise god um and the prayer point is father please let my breakthrough come suddenly such that it would shock and destabilize my enemies in the name of jesus christ amen 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 let us pray heavenly father we thank you because this is the appointed time today is the appointed time the bible says now faith is Father, we ask that you will do a quick walk in righteousness of righteousness in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every promise that we are waiting for, everything you have promised us. Father, Lord, we pray that right now, Lord, you remember us, O oh God, and bring it to pass. Let there be a suddenly miracle in our lives in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we will not grow weary of waiting, Almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. But we are strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost, our inner man, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me today. I hope this was not too long and I hope it really blessed you. And I hope you would have a lovely day at church. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Please tap the notification bell and you can drop me a comment. Thank you very much and God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Tayo.